What's going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today what we got for you is another 2020 position outlook for your favorite team, my favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now I know if you are a true Treeb Talks fan, you noticed that this video did not come out at 6 or 6.30 o'clock Pacific time, or if you are an East Coast fan, which I'm sure a majority of you are, 9, 9.30 your time. This came out at, let's see, 9, 10, 11 o'clock your time, 8.30 on the west coast and that is because your boy unfortunately has a job so i get off at around six o'clock my time at my job so with that being said tuesday through saturday the videos are going to be dropping around eight o'clock my time pacific time and around 11 o'clock eastern time i hope you guys understand i hope you guys are enjoying the content still and i hope you guys are still enjoying the position outlooks heading into the 2020 season and we have a really exciting one for you guys today we're talking about the wide receivers this one was the most excited that i was to do uh, heading into this video series that I was doing because I think this has potential to be the best wide receiver group that the Jaguars have had in a long time, especially with a very, very competent quarterback at the helm. I've spent the last two days really, really riding Gardner Minshew's dick really hard and we're going to take a break from that and we're just going to be talking about the guys that he's going to be throwing to we're going to be talking about dj chark and his progression and how he did in year two and how he's going to be in year number three we're going to be talking about guys that you know really took a step up last year and guys like chris conley we're going to be talking about guys that really kind of need to step up in order to really make the team next season like dd westbrook guys like keelan cole we're going to be talking about some depth guys as well on and on and on we're going to be talking everything that has to do with jaguars wide receivers so without further ado ladies and gentlemen this is the 2020 positional outlooks for the jacksonville jaguars wide receivers so now for this video what i'm going to do is i kind of want to address each wide receiver kind of individually um we're not going to be going too deep into this uh wide receiver room so we're not going to be talking about guys like cj board um especially with the no preseason option so guys like cj board um michael michael walker um uh, marvell ross terry goodwin or Terry Godwin, you know, those guys, I don't think, you know, they're not worth talking about as of right now. It's unfortunate for them, but they're really not going to have an opportunity to show themselves and really have an opportunity to make this roster. So we're going to be talking about, you know, the five, six guys that are going to be on this roster and will have an opportunity to make a difference in 2020 and will be on the field and will be wreaking havoc for opposing team secondary for next season starting things off with dj chark now um i talked a lot about dj chark heading into the 2019 season i said dj chark was a guy that i thought was going to surprise a lot of people last year i said he may have only got 100 yards last year but the physical tools that this guy brought was outstanding you know just based off of what he brought in college and based off of his combine numbers I, and you know what bortles was last year and what the 2018 season was i thought with you know, you take Bortles out of the equation, you put Foles in there, you know, I thought DJ Chark was primed to have a great year. Foles didn't end up working out, you brought in Minshew, and Minshew had a great year, and Chark ended up panning out, and he played extremely, extremely well. The Jags still, in my opinion, lack that true standout number one wide receiver, but DJ Chark has that ability to be that guy, and he's a true deep threat guy down the field. I don't think he's really that guy that's going to be able to catch, you know, those short intermediate throws, but he's a big play guy. There's a guy later on that we're going to talk about that I think as the season progresses is going to produce like that kind of guy, but as, you know, in the early stages of the season, I don't think, you know, the Jags are going to have that guy, but in the later parts of the season, I think that guy's going to emerge, but I don't think that guy's going to be DJ Chark. I think DJ Chark's going to be your playmaker. He's going to be the guy to make the plays down the field, but DJ Chark was a great surprise last year. Don't say I told you so, but I definitely told you so. DJ Chark was a great great playmaker in 2020 and i think he continues to make plays um i mean in 2019 i think he continues to make plays in 2020 and you know there were some plays with gardner Minshew and dj chark where they just connected and they had that natural chemistry where you know if that connection continues this could be a deadly duo for years to come 
if this front office doesn't mess it up and this offense continues to build because these two, like I said, have a lot of natural chemistry. Another wide receiver that it uh, that uh, Gardner Minshew has a lot of natural chemistry with is a guy that the Jaguars brought in from free agency, and that is Chris Conley. Chris Conley, man, hella plays, dude. And I got laughed at. I got laughed at in 2019 for saying Chris Conley was going to be a key addition in 2019, and he was going to make a lot of plays, and he was going to make plays when they mattered. And a lot of people said, oh no, Chris Conley's not that kind of player. He's not going to make those kind of plays. Pish posh, dude. He made those kind of plays. He had about 800 yards, had about five touchdowns, and he did what he needed to do. He basically was D.D. Westbrook and everything that we wanted D.D. Westbrook to be, but better. You know, obviously he has more years in the league. He's going to be more of a veteran presence, but Chris Conley was everything that we could have asked for him to be and more, and hopefully he can build on that, and hopefully he can continue to be successful, and to be dominant, and to be a guy that Minshew can rely on, because this is another guy that Gardner Minshew is building that natural chemistry with. It looks like the number one and number two option in Gardner Minshew's head right now is DJ Chark and Chris Conley, and those are two guys that you really 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 want on your football team and they brought two guys in in the draft too that I'm very excited about that I think Minshew you know unfortunately with you know the offseason stuff getting kind of canceled he's not really going to be able to build that kind of chemistry with him in the offseason but you know once the season gets rolling if he could build those chemistry with those rookies and he already has those chem that chemistry built with guys like Chris Conley and guys like DJ Chark Oh my goodness, this wide receiver core is going to be deadly, and Chris Conley is a part of that. Chris Conley played extremely well last season, and I cannot wait to see what he brings to the table in 2020. Now with that being said, we have to talk about D.D. Westbrook. A lot of people are really like high on D.D. Westbrook. I'm not. I don't really see it as much as other people do. I think a lot of people have high hopes for him. And I think a lot of people see, like, what he did in college and see, like, what he can do and hope that he can replicate that. But, you know, he's had chances. He's had opportunities. He's been injured. You know, he's had opportunities in special teams as well. And he's just really never found his groove here in Jacksonville. And I just I don't see him being that big of a difference maker. Um, I still think he'll be pretty high up in the depth chart for what he is. Um, because of who he is, and, you know, he'll still be 3-4 in the depth chart. He'll be 3. Who am I kidding? He'll probably... No, no, he probably won't, because, I mean, you know, we gotta talk about those rookies here in a bit. But, uh, Didi, yeah, you know, I, I'm not too high on Didi. I don't think Didi's gonna have a great year, and I think... I can see him being off this team after this season. Um, Didi Westbrook... I have not a lot to say about him, and I don't have a lot of high hopes for him. Uh, Keelan Cole, same thing. You know, Keelan Cole, he'll have, like, a spectacular catch every now and again. And, you know, he didn't really – I don't think he had his first catch last year until about week five or six of the season. And, you know, he kind of came around towards the latter part of the season and started to play pretty solid football. But, you know, it was never, never really – an elite guy, but you know, you go back to that 2017 season, and I think that's why a lot of people kind of cling on to the Keelan Coles and to the D.D. Westbrooks, because those were the guys of the 2017 season, those were your one and twos, the Keelan Cole and the D.D. Westbrook, but now it's kind of the D.J. Char, Chris Conley, and hopefully the two guys that I really want to talk about, and that's Colin Johnson and LaVishka Chanel. Colin Johnson could go either way. Colin Johnson's either a guy that will not see a lot of the field and won't play a whole lot or he's going to be a deep threat and he's going to be a difference maker. He balled out in Texas and I really liked his film. I had a second round grade on him and the Jags got him and I believe the third or fourth round and I think he has every chance in the world to ball out but nowhere near the fucking opportunity to ball out like LaVishka Chenault has and that's the guy I was talking about you know that has the opportunity to be kind of that number one wide receiver potential for the Jacksonville Jaguars. LaVishka Chenault has almost like DeAndre Hopkins like 
talent to me. He has solid hands, run after the catch ability, deep ball ability. He has it all. He has it all in himself to be a number one receiver. And, you know, you see all these talented, great wide receivers that have been on shitty teams. You look at guys like DeAndre Hopkins, you know, was in Houston for however long. Look at guys like Andre Johnson, Houston for however long, Calvin Johnson, Detroit. You look at Larry Fitzgerald, Arizona. I mean, Arizona had those years, but, you know, LaVishka Chenault could be the next one and play for Jacksonville. You know, even Jimmy Smith, Keenan McCardell, but, you know, they had those playoff years. But LaVishka Chenault can be the number one wide receiver that the Jacksonville Jaguars have been missing for so long. And holy moly, did the Jags get a steal in the draft by drafting this kid. He has all the talent in the world. I think he was the best wide receiver in his class. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding when I say that. I think he was better than Jerry Judy. He was better than all of them. Every single one of them. I think he was. I think he's the best pure talent wide receiver in this draft class, and the Jags managed to snatch him up, managed to draft him, and I think he's only going to help Gardner Minshew develop, and he's only going to help this team win football games. And this offense, again, is going to be a big vocal point for the Jaguars heading into 2020 because this is going to be the bread and butter for this team and not its defense. And that's going to be the first time in a long time that that's going to be its thing where the offense is going to be where this team strives and not its defense. So it's going to be very interesting to watch, and it really starts with these wide receivers because there's a lot of potential, a lot, a lot of potential with all of these guys here, and even the depth guys, you know, even the D.D. Westbrooks and the Keelan Coles, the guys that kind of, you know, shifted over and didn't really talk about, you know, if those guys, you know, have to get called on, you know, there's still talent there. There's still guys there that can play. There's still guys there that can ball out and have potential and still play fucking good football. There's still guys there that have every chance in the world to be studs. But the guys that are there at the one through four spots, those are your guys that could give Garner Minshew the opportunity to turn into a superstar. And that was the Jaguars 2020 position outlook for the wide receivers. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Don't forget, you can also hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.